Welcome to this week's Transformational Living Series. I am your host, Angela Levesque, and this show is a short 15-minute exploration of high-minded topics meant to transform your world. We really try and take a bird's-eye view of the world and a way to look at things from a different level of consciousness. Today, we are talking about the fear of fear and uh, <clears throat> what kind of precipitated this conversation is I've started doing a weekly uh, card for con card for contemplation and uh, on as a Facebook live video. So if you want to find out more, you can go to my Facebook page at Hestia Health. And um, last week, what showed up was the rabbit and the rabbit is a card all about fear. And in fact, rabbit medicine warns us that what we fear, we often draw towards ourselves. So I really wanted to dive deeper into this idea of the fear of fear um, and really explore that. Before I get there, I just want to remind my listeners that you can listen every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time right here on Spreaker, or you can listen to the podcasts after the fact on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher. If you'd like to know more about myself as a writer, healer, and spiritual teacher, you can go to HestiaHealth.com. And uh, yes, please do find me on Facebook and on Twitter at Hestia Health. Well, FDR was very, uh, very famously said in his um, address to the nation, uh, first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. And of course, he was talking about how we, um, as a nation, were moving out of the Great Depression and that we really needed to... Um, kind of grab hold of our fear, and it was actually fear in it of itself that was going to be preventing us from moving forward and moving out of the Great Depression. And um, often when we hear that quote, I think that we don't really understand what that means, the fear of fear. And from a mindfulness perspective, it is exactly each mind state that is comes from e that's born out of each mind state. So it's fear that fear, it's love that loves. Um, and really, none of those mind states or none of those emotions are happening. They are not part of us. They are happening to us, but they are not an aspect of our essence. And we'll explore that a little bit more as we move forward today. Um, so even when we look at the, the definition of fear, which is an anxious feeling caused by our anticipation of some imagined event or experience... So again, we've talked a lot about um, how the body registers things as sensations, as unpleasant, pleasant, or neutral. And it isn't until we create a story that it becomes fear. So for example, if you um, are scared of public speaking, while your body might register that, you know, standing up in front of people as unpleasant, it doesn't become fear until we start thinking about you know, maybe walking up to the podium and we trip and we fall, or maybe we mess up our words and we feel like, oh no, what if I make a fool of myself? What if people don't agree with what I'm saying? What if they reject me based on my words? And so that is the fear of fear. And sometimes fear comes from a memory. So maybe you had an experience in fifth grade where you got up in front of the the class and people started making fun of you for what you were saying. So in that case, that fear is actually born out of that memory. So that fear of that fear of that memory. And oftentimes it is something that's an anticipated event. So very common is a fear of flying. And so they get into the plane, the body registers, this is an unpleasant experience. But the story doesn't come in until we start thinking about, you know, going down in a fiery crash or, you know, what, how are you going to suffer on the way to your um, untimely death? Or what about your children? Uh, and I, you know, I've had that experience too, when my husband and I go on holiday together without our son, and we think, oh man, if there is a plane crash, what, what's going to happen to our son? Do we have our, you know, our will in order, all of that? And, you know, I think a certain amount of that is being prudent, right? Making sure you go on a trip with your your spouse, that you do have um, your will and you do have the directions of what happens to uh, your children or your belongings. I just think that that's prudent. But the fear of the fear is, you know, sitting in the plane, white knuckled, 
thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to crash and burn here. And most people have never, ever been in a plane crash. And actually, we know statistically, you're more likely to get into a car crash than a plane crash. And yet people don't have the same level of fear in a car than a plane. Again, it's fear of the fear. So um, like all emotions, we talk about this all the time, fear is information. It's a data point. It helps us understand our beliefs, our worldview, our circumstances. It gives us information about the story that we've created around that unpleasant situation. One of the most interesting ways I've found to kind of look at these classifications of fear is uh, something created by Dr. Carl Albrecht, and it's called the fear archy. And he came up with this classification system to help us understand our fears. And it's plotted, like uh, similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's plotted um, on a pyramid. And so at the very base, we have uh, extinction. So the fear of ceasing to exist, the fear of annihilation. So this could be the fear of death, um, or it could be something a little less innocuous, like, you know, when you stand at the edge of a, a high cliff and you look down and you think, oh, you know, you have that that um, little moment of paralysis where you think, oh, no, right? Well, that is the fear of extinction. Um, the next fear he talks about is the fear of mutilation. And so going back to my example of, you know, crashing in a fiery death, there is this kind of fear of being in a whole bunch of pain, um, losing parts of the bod our bodies, um, uh, loss of integrity of our structure, people who maybe have to have surgery, like say mastectomies. And that would be a very real fear, right? Their fear is their body is changing. But then there's also within this mutilation, there's also fear of people continually stepping over our personal boundaries, of being invaded. Um, and so this could also be, uh, you know, rape, sexual assault. So we move at the base from extinction, then we move to mutilation. And then on top of that, there's loss of autonomy. And this is uh, the fear of being paralyzed, restricted, um, entrapped, imprisoned. Uh, so this can show up very physically, like claustrophobia, which is something that um, I actually have a fear of. Even when I'm actually watching people on, uh, you know, TV and maybe they're doing like cave diving and they're, you know, uh, scuba diving in these really, really tight spaces. That even makes my skin crawl a little bit. I can feel that. But there's also, in this loss of autonomy, there could be fear of commitment. So joining a group, uh, feeling like maybe uh, you would have to compromise your thoughts or your beliefs to the will of the group. Another way uh, could be like social anxiety. So agoraphobia, again, having that sort of paralyzed feeling about going out into open spaces. So on top of that, then we have the fear of separation. And this is a fear of being abandoned, rejected, um, not feeling connected, being cast um, out of the group, perhaps being bullied or ostracized, um, maybe, you know, being left at the altar. These are all uh, fear of separation. And then finally, at the very top, uh, Carl Arbrecht says the, the classification is ego death. And so this is shame. This is feeling profound self uh, disapproval, loss of integrity of self, being judged, not being good enough, not being worthy, lovable. Um, and this is often where fear of public speaking comes from. And often people will say the fear of public speaking is stronger than the fear of death. The interesting thing um, is if you kind of overlay this over Maslow's hierarchy needs, right, that pyramid goes from the very bottom, the basics of survival, up to the very top, which is self-actualization. And so these fears seem to be very um, uh, correlated, very relatable to this feararchy. So as uh, I think this gives us a, a really good insight when we think about how do we um, challenge our fears? How do we conquer, move past them? Uh, Nelson Mandela said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. So if we kind of relate this classification of fear and look at where it, it fits on this Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it gives us an idea about the story we're telling ourselves. Um, so as we move from security to self-actualization, at what point can we look at, is this you know, challenging the way that I 
um, my fear of abandonment? And is that challenging my sense of belonging? And then let's look at our place in our world. Where are we feeling like we're not belong, we're belonging? Where are we feeling like um, we might be at risk for abandonment if we uh, step out of the, the will or the thoughts of our tribe? Uh, so once we understand your fear and how it relates to your path of awakening or self-realization, depending on kind of where uh, the perspective you're coming at it, um, then what needs to shift in order for you to triumph uh, over it, in order to conquer it? And maybe that's the taming of mind. So, you know, from a Buddhist perspective, meditation um, assists us in liberation because it helps us um, understand our mind and it helps us to tame it. So perhaps it's meditation, or maybe it's about reframing or challenging a worldview. Uh, maybe we're just not looking at it from the right perspective. And one of the ways that we can do that is to kind of follow the fear all the way to the end. So ask, if that's really true, then what? Um, or looking at, is there, if it is true, are there ways that you can, um, are there action steps that you can take in order to prevent that? So, um, rabbit medicine is really, like I said at the beginning, it, it tells us that what we fear, we often end drawing towards us. And from kind of the 40,000 foot view, that's because there's a lesson in that for us. So we, in order to move and develop and, um, move through our, the evolution of soul, we're going to bring these lessons to us so that we can then move through them. So we transcend and include, uh, so um, just looking at kind of that overlay of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs over this feararchy, I think being able to classify, you know, what is it really that I fear? It gives us opportunity to take action. It gives us opportunity to reframe. It gives us opportunity to challenge the story that we've created because fear is a story. So that's kind of what I have for you today. Um, Again, my name is Angela Levesque. Uh, you can find out more about the work that I do. I do empowerment coaching, uh, energy work, um, and I really do help people figure out what is the stories that they're operating from and can they write a new story. So you can find out more at HestiaHealth.com. If you'd like to uh, follow me on iTunes, so this uh, little short podcast comes to your phone every week. Again, you can do that on iTunes. Find me on SoundCloud, Spreaker, YouTube, Stitcher. Um, and yes, uh, I am here live every Wednesday right here on Spreaker at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Well, that's my show for you this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good week. Bye.